Hey guys, um, a GED student on Facebook was struggling with this pretty uh, challenging example of an expression that needs to be simplified. And since there's so much going on, we need our order of operations. Uh, so let me just really quickly remind you that there are four steps in the orders of operations. The first step you should take care of is any groupings. When I do order of operations, I actually say Gemma to help me remember the first step. It uh, starts with a G, it's groupings. Now, yes, groupings do include things in parentheses, but also things in brackets, um, things on the top and bottom of fractions. There's lots of different kinds of groupings. Then after we take care of groupings, we should handle any exponents. And remember, exponents include both the little floating powers and their inverses, the roots. After that, we're looking at multiplication and its inverse, and the inverse of multiplication is division. And then finally, our final step is always any addition and subtraction, addition and its inverse. Okay, so let's hit up the groupings first. So what I notice here is that there's actually a lot of groupings. Uh, I see these brackets indicating a very large grouping there. There's a lot of stuff going on in there. Um, I see uh, some stuff going on on the top and the bottom of a fraction, those are also groupings. And I see uh, this uh, expression that's on the inside of parentheses, a bunch of different groups. So it's like, which one should I uh, handle first? So the basic general principle uh, with groupings is you work inside to outside. So I'm gonna deal with those two inner groupings, uh, the ones created by the fraction, uh, the top and the bottom of the fraction, and then the ones in the parentheses. Uh, since they're not touching, they don't share any numbers, we can work them at the same time and it won't matter. So that's exactly where I'm gonna start. The innermost groupings, the inside groupings. So let's do that. Three plus nine. Three plus nine is 12. Underneath the three point plus nine, I'm going to write 12. And uh, the bottom of this fraction says four minus one. Four minus one is three. Now be really careful, super important when you're working order of operation problems that you're a good secretary. Don't lose any symbols. I have not dealt with this fraction bar yet. I have not dealt with this uh, bracket yet, this little times sign, or the fact that I'm squaring, okay? But I am gonna do this other grouping as well. 14 minus 11 is also an inner grouping and it doesn't share any numbers with the other inner grouping, so I can do it. So 14 minus 11 is three. Uh, again, be a very, very good secretary. Don't lose anything from above. So I dealt with everything in the brackets, but I haven't dropped the four, the minus, and the 150. Cool. Now, don't be the student who is tempted to do this 150 minus four next. Remember that addition and subtraction happen at the very end. So I cannot deal with this portion of my problem yet. I need to continue to work within my grouping. So I dealt with my top and bottom of my fraction. I dealt with the math that was inside of that grouping. But take a look, these brackets represent another group. This is a big old group here. And there's a lot of things to do in this group. There's actually three things. I can see 12 divided by three. This fraction bar means divide. I can see a time sign, and I can see that this three is being squared, okay? Um, and so remember that even inside of uh, groupings, you're still gonna work the order of operations, okay? So what I'll do first is I'll just square the three. Now, for those of you who are really good at the order of operations and skilled and know that I could be doing two steps at once right now, that's cool. You can go ahead and skip that step if you know that. But I'm just going to go down my list. Okay, so then I won't deal with anything else and I'm gonna drop everything else down. There's my times, there's my 12 over three, there's my brackets I haven't touched and my 150 minus four times all that jazz. Okay, so still not done with inside the parentheses, but notice what I've got going on here. I've got division and multiplication, and when you're on the same step, you work left to right. So I'm gonna just deal with this uh, leftmost thing here. 12 divided by three is four. Drop down everything I haven't used yet. I haven't used the times nine. I haven't used the brackets, the four, the minus 150. 
Great. Okay, almost done with that grouping. Let's finish that up. Four times nine is 36. And then drop everything. Brackets, four and minus 115. You might be saying, well, what in the world? Um, What am I supposed to do now? What are that four and that 36 doing? Well, remember that proximity uh, tells you to multiply. So the only thing between this four and this 36 is brackets. Brackets, just like parentheses, um, are just a way of uh, us visually separating two numbers that are close together. So uh, the, the fact that the only thing between the four and the 36 is brackets tells us we should be multiplying. So we got to do four times 36. Now you wouldn't have a calculator if you had this on the GED. So I'm going to come over here to do some side work. A four times six is 24. 3 times 4 is 12, 13, 14, so I get 144. Ooh, I meant to write that in blue, y'all. I'm not staying consistent. For anybody who has any kind of issues with looking at the steps of algebra, using a new color for each step can help you uh, get used to how we write things in algebra and uh, not lose anything. Okay, so I still haven't used my 150 or my minus. And now I can do 150 minus 144. You can do it in side work if you need to, but it, I'd just like to count up because it's so easy. So 144, 145, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. That's just six. All right. So this long, nasty expression simplified comes to just six.